Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. All right, Enrique. Yes, you are. We'll find a way. We always have. Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here with Crystal, and uh, we just saw Christopher Nolan's latest film, Interstellar. And uh, are you a Christopher Nolan fan? Uh, I like his Batman films, uh, but I won't say that Christopher Nolan is someone I would necessarily just I have to get to the theater to see. But. Uh, I like him. <laughs> uh, I really like Christopher Nolan. Um, I don't know, there's this weird thing with Nolan these days. Apparently not a lot of people like him, or people think... I think a lot of people don't like him because his movies are so popular. I don't know. It's not not that. You know, and his movies are, you know, they're obviously always well shot and well produced and all that, but I I, I don't know. I, I didn't like Inception, which I know is not a popular opinion amongst folks, so... and. But was it a dream or not? LOL, I don't get it. I really like Christopher Nolan. I was really excited for this. I did like Inception. I've liked all his stuff. I don't remember Insomnia that well, but I remember liking it. Um, the Prestige, I might have had a problem with the ending with that one. Mm. That was that bothered me. Anyway, but we're here to talk about Interstellar. Let's do that. Uh, so Interstellar is a science fiction film starring Matthew McConaughey, who mm. was starring in science fiction films... Long before he got paid to... That joke doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, so it stars Matthew McConaughey, big actor. Well, he's always been a big actor, yeah. but coming off his Oscar win... I'm going to say that uh, he's also not someone I run to the theater for, usually. No, I'm His not... acting actually tends to bother me. Yeah, it kind of did in this movie, but we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, he is a engineer pilot. Uh, apparently like in this... military maybe? I think so. Yeah. This is like the future. Lots of people, like the world is winding down. There's not a lot of food There's not left. Not crops. There's there, like no animals. Yeah, from what we can tell, there are no animals. Yeah. Very little vegetation. There's like a few trees, grass, and corn. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of dust storms because the world's drying up so much. Right. Uh, people are getting medical issues and not being able to breathe. Uh, and not being able to really treat or catch them either. Yeah. Because yeah. Of the. Um, yeah, so it's a really bleak world, not like total, ca- it's not Road Warrior, mm. no one's wearing leather Speedos and hockey masks and trying to eat each other yet, I'm sure yeah. if things didn't work out it would get there, but um, yeah, Mel Gibson's not riding in this one, uh, so yeah, it's this bleak world and they do something kind of weird in the beginning where you find out that they rewrote history. And it's one of my old Dex books, See, I always love the pictures. It's an old federal textbook. We've replaced them with the corrected versions. Corrected? Explaining how the Apollo missions were fake to bankrupt the Soviet Union. You don't believe we went to the moon? I believe it was a brilliant piece of propaganda that the Soviets bankrupted themselves, pouring resources into rockets and other useless machines. Useless machines? And if we don't want a repeat of the excess and wastefulness of the 20th century, then we need to teach our kids about this planet, not tales of leaving it. Which idiots today actually believe. Yeah. People believe that the... It was real, all right? I don't care what YouTube documentary you watched, it was real. Yeah. Um, Uh, Yeah, so that's kind of interesting because it's funny growing up now thinking about what we learned in history. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Edison was a great guy. And now you look back and you're like, Thomas Edison was an asshole. Who stole everything. So that part kind of had Thomas some truth Edison to it. Thomas Edison tortured animals <laughs> live and killed an elephant for science, maybe? Hey, remember that cotton gin that Eli Whitney definitely built? <laughs> I learned that in school. Yeah, um, so that part, I kind of rolled my eyes, but then yeah. I thought about it. I'm like, that's something that could probably happen. Who yeah. knows what we believe in history, if that's real or not. Uh, or even today, like, what 
people believe is happening today, in people government don't, versus what's really happening. People don't believe what happened five minutes ago today. <laughs> no, there's conspiracy um, theory for everything. What I was going to say is with them denying NASA, uh, Matthew McConaughey's character proves point that, you know, because they're trying to deny that, try to deny that there's ever been MRIs and stuff like that. That's how yeah. his wife died from, a, I think, like a brain tumor yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he has a problem with it. Yeah, he has a problem. He gets his kid suspended from school. On purpose. Um, yeah, on purpose. Uh, so it's cool kind of seeing, like, we don't see a lot of this new world. Any other movie it would have shown you, like, the whole planet. Right, right. Like, you would have seen, like, New York underneath water. I think AI did that. Or I actually think it was supposed to be some part of New York. Because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because um, the because they go to Yankee. a baseball game. And yeah. the New York Yankees are playing, and no one even knows who they are. <laughs> the Yankees are like nineteen-year-old kids. Yeah. <laughs> and the baseball stadium terribly. is something you would find, you yeah. know, just in any suburb. I thought that was kind of clever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, the world is dying, and he's like this super cool engineer who basically doesn't fit in, right? Because there's no need for anyone like that. There's all no he need does for his smarts. And, yeah, yeah. All he does is fix robot tractors, basically. Yeah. Um. And then he notices his daughter keeps getting visited by a ghost, or she keeps she thinks she's getting symbols like signs from this ghost. She she did uh, realize that it was Morse code. Yeah, yeah. It turns out like the or binary it was binary. binary. Okay. Yeah, and then Matthew McConaughey realized that she's telling the truth, and yeah. it gives him coordinates, and boom, he finds NASA. Who are you, Doctor Brand? And I knew a Doctor Brand once. He was a professor. What makes you think I'm not? Engineer's cute either. Please, Dr. Brand, I don't have any idea what this is. Now I'm scared for my daughter and I want her by my side. You give me that, I'll tell you anything you want to know. Get the principals and the girl in the conference room, please. Your daughter is fine. Break it. Who was kept underground in a secret? Yeah, because NASA wants to do everything secretly because they yeah. know the public would never fund them. Uh, so that's kind of, so that was, like, kind of interesting. Like, right off the bat, they introduced, like, this weird supernatural thing, which I was not expecting. Yeah. I didn't see that in any of the previews. Yeah, it was, it was, it kind of had, like, a signs feel to it in the beginning. Only not a piece of shit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so he goes to NASA, and then they're like, well, we didn't know you were alive, even though he wasn't really hiding. No. So Michael Kane could have just fucking Googled his address or something. But there is no Google. There's no yeah, technologies. They, got, they have computers and Not stuff. Not like that. It's kicking it back old school. Yeah, well, yeah. anyway, he finds Matthew McConaughey. He's like, you need to lead this mission. Apparently, they've been sending ships out into this wormhole that was put there right. by who knows what. There's a, a, mis a mission from, like, a decade ago. Yeah. They, like, sent 12 people to 12 different uh, potential planets where mm. they can hopefully uh, use to pretty much move the people of Earth to yeah yeah and they've to gotten, sustain life they've gotten data that three of the planets are potential candidates so they're sending everyone this, else kind of died off. yeah so they're sending this new mission here and uh, it gets a little complicated I'm not gonna get into it too much but basically right. he's got to go to this planet there's a backup there's once they get there they're either gonna make this big space station or they gave him a bunch of fetuses on yeah. ice to thaw out. So he's got two plans. So his daughter's really upset. That's like a big thing. Like right. he promises her that he'll come back and you're kind of like rolling your eyes. Like, yeah. yeah, like that'll happen. Murph, you have to talk to me, Murph. Six. I need to fix this before I go. You have no idea when you're coming back. Five, main engine start. Couldn't you have told her you were going to save the world? No. Four. When you become a parent. Three. One thing becomes really clear. Two. And I just said you want to make sure your children feel safe. One. I'm coming back. When? Important point, he leaves her a watch. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, yeah, so, so there's these alien life forms that no one knows why. They're giving they keep, us. They keep sending uh, signals or messages that they yeah, want yeah. them to come and yeah. somehow. And we're apparently trusting them, right? Um, so he goes on his rocket ship with uh, Anne Hathaway, and, and then two actors. Two that other I'm, actors. I'm not really. F I think the, I think the black guy is the dude who was playing Martin Luther King in that trailer we saw. Maybe. Uh oh, and my favorite character, 
Chars the robot. The robot. Which at first it's made out of shoe boxes, or at least I, it looks like it. Like spray paint shoe boxes. At first this robot I, I I couldn't believe it. I think I just I'm too used to like Michael Bay and Iron Man and all right. that. Robots today are always human shaped and right. made of like all these interchanging parts. You meet the robot in this movie. And it's like four long shoe boxes put together. That right, it, it's it it's, looks like something out of the, the size of a door. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looks like a walking ATM machine. Yeah, it yeah. just and it walks so funny. It's like yeah. if you ever watch like an old science fiction movie, and like it's a guy in a suit who's having trouble. <laughs> It looks like a like uh, one of the less impressive droids from Star Wars. It definitely grew on me. I like oh, it definitely grew on me. I like Especially when like later in the movie you get to see other stuff that it the can do. Other functions, yeah. And uh, that was cool. But I every th- time that thing was on screen, I was cracking up. <laughs> and then whoever yeah. wrote this had the genius idea of like, oh, let's let it tell jokes, which sounds terrible. I know you guys are thinking, oh god, a robot that tells jokes. That sounds awful. But it was done well. Like, yeah. he's more sarcastic, but not over the top. Right. He's not like Jar Jar Binks or something like that. Not like painful comedy relief. He fits well within the rest of the movie. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was hilarious. They go on their mission. First planet is a bust. First planet is nothing but water and yeah. big waves. Yeah. And what it is between the time travel... Oh, well, yeah, there's... yeah. One imagine. hour on this planet is seven years yes. on Earth. They uh, That's actually one thing I really liked about it. I guess we'll get to the likes, but there's right. a whole theory of relativity and stuff going on here. Right. So, not like, a trip to the planet, right. it's not like Star Trek, where it's like, oh, let's go back. It's like, right. no, you're spending a lot of time down the there. The person who, like, went there originally was only landed, I think it was, like, something like two hours yeah she said before like before they got there yeah. and then she only probably died in like minutes before they got there but because of time suspension yeah yeah she was dead in real time and like time. in our like on earth time she's been dead for 12 years right. when they got there she was only dead for a few minutes yeah um yeah this giant wave this planet is apparently a two inch pond that turns into a giant tidal right. wave every five minutes right so that planet's next one of the people dies uh, they go back and they come up with this, they come up with this There's other planet. There's two other planets, but they only have enough fuel and resources to get to one successfully. And this is, uh, one of the themes of the film. And Hathaway wants to go to the one planet because she was in love with the guy who was sent there. And Matthew McConaughey's like, oh, you can't follow your heart. This has got to be logical. And she's like, wait. Maybe we've spent too long trying to figure all this out with theory. Love is the one thing transcends time and space and matthew connie's like nope <laughs> he's like no no let's go to this planet uh where they fall out who i did not know was in the film fucking uh matt damon matt damon, <laughs> matt damon. uh and right away i he just I, gives off that he's the bad guy i just he like just, as soon as they showed his he's a he's not like a bad guy it would it would it, the only thing if worse is if they um had William Defoe be, yeah. be the guy that yeah. they thought yeah. like he just I mean, well, Matt, as soon as he woke up he and he was talking and his mannerisms like you just knew I he could was just up tell no he good. was lying and, and his, his robot was disassembled and you made up some bullshit excuse that he had to use its resource and I'm like right. that thing is made out of shoe boxes you're not using any resources from the shoe box robot um so yeah it turns out his planet is also not inhabitable he lied and he wants and, to get their right. ship. Uh, yada, 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 that becomes, like, this whole thing. Because he pretty much is going crazy for, from being stuck there for so long. Yeah, he lied, so he knew someone would come and get him out of there. Right. Uh, so that's basically the whole movie, is basically how are they gonna, how are pretty they gonna fix that? sustain life elsewhere. Yeah. And then, um... It's like, how will they habit, like, apparently the third planet is ha- inhabitable, habitable, but they have to go through this whole obstacle because Matt Damon just throws a monkey wrench... Yeah, in their plan. Kind of destroys part of the spaceship. <laughs> yes. But he winds up dying. Spoiler alert that we weren't <laughs> all that sad about. Uh. So that's it for the basic story. I don't want to spoil it too much yet. In yeah. case you were still wondering the scene. I just wanted to give you an idea of what the movie was like. Um, let's get into what we really liked about this film. What did you really like about this film? Mm. Um, well, one, Anne Hathaway is one of my absolute favorites. So Really? Yeah. I feel like every woman hates Anne Hathaway for some reason. I love her. First off, um, just everything that she's in, I don't know. I like her. I I really like. I like almost every movie that she's been in. I don't think there's been one where I'm like, I don't like this movie. Um, 
And you can't tell me that there's ever been a better oh, Fantine from Les Mis. You just I, can't. I didn't see. I've never seen a um, Les Mis, so I don't know. She's just heartbreaking the entire <laughs> time, and it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I Yeah, I thought she was... I think it's just because she's the first Catwoman on film that's been written right. Yeah. I think she's the best Catwoman. Yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer acted well, but Catwoman's not a fucking zombie. Anyway, that's a different discussion. Right. Uh, uh, I really liked her, too. Um, oh. Matthew McConaughey is acting usually bothers me. It didn't bother me as much in this film. I thought he did better, you know. Uh, then again, he has the... You know, how was a guy in 10 days and go some <laughs> girlfriend's do, past. Like, that's his kind of, like, He did do a lot of schlock, and he's like, <laughs> him, and, him and Ben Affleck, they're trying, they're getting out of the schlock. Trying, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're succeeding. They both have Oscars now. Yeah. Um, well, he was, he was. He, gone he, Girl for another video. <laughs> he, he was really good in, um, Matt McConaughey was really good in uh, Dallas Buyers Club. I like that movie. I haven't seen that one. I heard good things. That was pretty good. Um. What I like about, I like Christopher Nolan's films. One of the things he does well is, like, really use special effects to drive the story mm-hmm. instead of make it about the, the make yeah. it all about special effects. Because, like, um, I feel like a lot of the ships in this film, except for certain these, might have been miniatures. Right. Which right. you don't see anymore, basically. Right. Uh, filmed, all, all the ships were filmed really well. I felt like they were actual, you know, other than, there are some scenes where, you, you know. Right. Uh, the planet's... Felt That's were pretty really very, cool. Really cool. I'm They're sh- really cool. I love the ice one. Yeah, and yeah. Hoth, I guess. How, like he like drove into a cloud and it was yeah, the ice clouds cloud. were actually like frozen, yeah. but gravity's different, so it didn't sink. Right. Uh, it's more I thought, dense, I guess. I that was really cool. I love um, when it was CGI. I love all the wormhole stuff. Right. How he uh, did that with like the star stretching uh, and everything. Yeah, and it reminds me of <laughs> 2001. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's something we have to mention. This right. movie, we'll save that for the dislikes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like his use of special effects. Uh, he's one of the only guys who knows how to do really good special effects that aren't distracting. The robot, for the most part, looked practical, yeah. except for when it was running. Yeah. I mean, that one actually looks so ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> well, because they were making it do that thing first, and yeah. then when yeah. he like turned into a star, <laughs> 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 It went really um, fast and like picked up Anne Hathaway like if, uh, it was arms. <laughs> if you like some of the visuals in Inception, there's a lot of visuals that kind of are like that with like the worlds lo- yeah, lo- looping. Yeah, um, uh, I really like that. The um, the story is really good. Uh, very tight. Uh, I I, don't know, I guess we'll get into the dislike. My what? only my only problem with the story, and I think this is just because of me because I watch a lot of science fiction. Mm-hmm. I've, I've seen a lot of it in other films it, before. It was definitely adapted from Twilight Zone yes, and 2001 a... and... Well, the, 2001 is the most obvious one, but right. like there are other ones like, um, what did I say? Uh, Flight of the Navigator. Yeah. That was a movie about a kid who got in a spaceship and then when he came back, he stayed the same age. Right. Everyone got well, older. Like I said, it, that was also the same concept of a Twilight episode. Yeah, yeah, Twilight Zone episode. And, um, oh, Matt, Matt Damon, I kind of knew... There was going to be something sketchy about him because there was a Star Trek episode about that where right. the guy created warp speed, he disappeared in space, they find him, and I remember there was some like struggle with him, mm-hmm. but he was the same age, so I knew that was going to... I am shocked that none of the robots turned evil. I was waiting. That one would have been too you, easy. You wanted that. So I know. Uh, well, it would have been too easy because 2001's been ripped off a lot, but yeah. the one thing that's been ripped off the most was the evil robot. Right. So I'm glad they didn't do that. But in the back of my mind, I was waiting for that to happen. Um, I guess we got into get into more spoilerish territory. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I called it right at the beginning oh, that the it ghost. Was definitely in the beginning that the yeah. ghost was definitely them from the future. Yeah, in some kind of time space continuum. Yeah, uh, bending of time, yeah. and gravity. So basically, time. basically, Ma- uh, Matthew McConaughey he saves the space station. He lets Anne Hathaway go, and him and the robot they go into the black hole. Right, and then he realizes the black hole. Is just a never-ending series of his daughter's bedroom, it's, and it's all fabric of time in yeah. a tunnel. Yeah, and it's like and literally looks that like was, fabric, which I thought was cool. Right, which is what because um, they never, no one ever knew what was on the other side of the horizon. That's yeah. why they called it the black hole. Yeah, because they thought it was just darkness, and they didn't know it was there. And it, it, that's where he discovers the fabric yeah. of time that apparently is a dimension that they'll create even more in the future. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of 
It's kind of confusing. Not really. It's but not really confusing. It's just, it's hard it's to explain. To it's hard to explain. <laughs> Basically, like, the the beings bring him here so he can send messages to his daughter. But the beings so the she whole time fig- is just him from the future. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. He can, so she can figure out how to get the space station up in the air right. and survive the thing. So that's what they were... He basically helps her with that. And then right. um, apparently the beings are us in the future, which the... All right, there is a little bit of a paradox. If the beings are trying to help us survive, then how did they evolve from us if we all died? It's that... It's, that's the part that, you're not really supposed to think that, about. No, it's that loop around. But it's, then... But it's, I don't know. I have some problems with it. I just feel like if the beings exist, then they shouldn't give a fuck because somehow we survived and turned into these beings. But, but I get that's not... Because they were able to, to bend the fabric of time. Yeah, that's and, not the so, part you're supposed to focus right. on. I know that. That's like when I saw Inception. I was just like, if they're in a dream, why are they not riding dinosaurs I every five seconds? So and I'm like, I'm not supposed to. Inception. <laughs> you don't want to get me started. There are parts of the movie you're Inception. not supposed to think about. Uh, that's the problem with Christopher Nolan. He wants you to focus on the big picture, but sometimes you kind of like Bruce Plot Wayne. Holes. Bruce Wayne coming back in Dark Knight Rises. The, how? The, how? <laughs> the important part was that he came back. You're not supposed to care about how. Um. <laughs> Speaking of coming back, uh, a lot of people hate the ending of this film. I keep seeing complaints. Uh, okay, what I, keep, I, what I keep seeing is people saying, like, go see it because it's going to make you think. And they they keep thinking about the ending and they're still confused about the ending. I just kept all thinking of all like, the stuff it reminded me that I've already seen. I know. And I'm like, really? It's not all that confusing mm. at all. And it makes me sad for the future. <laughs> if you're confused, his films by this movie are never ending. confusing because he no. explains everything almost too much. <laughs> Ince- okay, Inception. We're gonna go here. Ellen Pager's annoying character literally <laughs> tells you what is going everything on the that's... entire movie. Just in case you're yeah. confused by the action that's going on in front of you, she's going to dialogue it <laughs> the entire time, and maybe yeah. gonna punch her. So there. There is a lot, <laughs> lately Christopher Nolan has been wanting to do happy endings, and because uh, Matthew McConaughey promises his daughter that he'll come back, and of course he does. I mean, it's but she's older and he is his. Uh, yeah, she's Ellen Bernstein now. About, she he managed to get the information. Which is her. once again very much like the Twilight Zone episode where it's a forty year kind of yeah. 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 But anyway, um, yeah. So he's floating around set. Somehow the aliens, us fifth dimension things. Send him back. Well, he because he went into the bigger wormhole, the mm. other side of the horizon, which pretty much slingshot him mm. back into our galaxy. and the robot. It sent the robot back too, which I thought was really nice of yeah. it. Thank but, God, um, because he's really who I cared about surviving. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like very convenient that he managed to get sent back right at that time when the that's, space station was there. Because that's where the other wormhole was. Yeah, I'm just. So that's I'm, where it's gonna I just be. think it was convenient that it sent him there at that moment in time. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. Um, well, duh. He morph coded <laughs> for the watch. <laughs> uh, so they find him. He gets to see his daughter again. It's a happy ending. And then he decides, hey, I'm going to go back and go well, find Ian Hathaway. No, he doesn't decide because he's talking She to tells his him, daughter. yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, and he's like, what do I... Because he's like, I want to be here for you now. But she's old and she's on the verge of death. Yeah. And she's like... She's forgiven him, basically. Because like, she no, hates him throughout the whole movie. Oh, pretty much, for the most yeah. part. For and abandoning. She, and she was like, no parent should watch their child die. No. So I have my family now. Mm. Which was, it was a little kind of stick in his side. But, um, <laughs> and then he was like, well, what do I do? Because his whole, his whole purpose, while not only finding places for Earth beings to live is really to get back to his children like that's like what's driving him throughout this entire movie so now that he's finally back and reconnected with his daughter for like two seconds he's like what do i do now kind of like (laughs) what is my purpose because my children are pretty much dead like i have no purpose now i'm just on this floating spaceship and And she's like go find uh anne hathaway's character because she did find that third planet Mm. she did set up camp and is sending signals. And apparently and it works. And, and, it's, and she's walking around without the helmet. Yeah. So she's able to breathe on this planet that she discovered. Mm-hmm. And she's pretty much waiting for him because, once again, he's one of the only people that, like, know how to do this. Yeah. Like, yeah. bring everyone that's they're all sustaining life on the station mm-hmm. to this planet that yeah. Anne Hathaway is on. And that's, that's pretty much, like... Earth is still going to continue, just on another planet. <laughs> and uh, the space station's cool at the end, too. Station- it's all, like, circular and shit. Yeah, I like when they're playing the baseball game, the, and 
they like hit the baseball way up in the air, which then goes into someone's like yeah, yeah window. Yeah. Not a great design. Yeah. <laughs> Not a smart I'm design. Like, who puts a house right on top of a baseball field <laughs> um, like that? But <laughs> my one last issue, and this happens in it, like <sighs> artificial gravity. That's what you do when you don't want to do wire work and digitally replace wires. So I would have preferred it if they were, like, floating the whole time, like Apollo 13. Right. That's really hard to film, though. Um, so I can't have issue with that. Uh, overall, I think it was a fine film. It was uh, good. It's not schlocky, which I... Any other film that did something like this today, mm-hmm. it would be, like, the new Star Trek movies. Yeah. Like, like, they would go through the wormhole and there would be, like, monsters Beings on the planet that they have to fight. Right. And uh, so it, I did mention that it ripped off a lot of movies... But not ripped off, but like it borrowed it, elements. It did. It, it, it borrowed elements from it good. It's toes in, yeah. in each one, but it also stands on its yeah. own. It, it, it borrowed elements from good science fiction yeah. films. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of closer to like something like Sunshine. If you've ever seen Sunshine, that was that had a similar story of saving mankind and a guy going crazy. Right. Uh, yeah, so fine film. I enjoyed it. Maybe not the best Christopher Nolan film, just because it seems like a bunch... Well put together, but it seems like just a, too many borrowed ideas from other stuff. I... I wasn't crazy about Matthew McConaughey either. Uh, the... Toward the end, but... The only thing I guess I would maybe, like, just... Me personally would like to change is the, the flow of time and the use of it, like, mm. in the length of the film, if that makes sense. Like, a... Like the time travel, or...? Just all it was just like all of a sudden he discovered the space, space station. Not seven years later, like I felt like that moved a little too quickly. And yeah, other parts yeah, didn't yeah. Move quickly enough. Yeah, the beginning was really slow, and then right. it's just like boom, he's on the ship and he's already right. in the atmosphere. It's like wait, whoa, I want right. to see the whole launch. And, um, and it wasn't even like they were trying to just set up this whole world that we're in mm, in the beginning. Like I, it was just a town. It was just things were happening. I don't know. Yeah. But um, I think you will enjoy it if you yeah. like science fiction, like real science fiction, not science schlock. Some of the get. better movies that are out there in the theaters now to watch. Yeah, I haven't seen a movie in a while. Yeah. <laughs> so. The last one I saw was Gone Girl. I didn't and see it's... it. I've had a problem with David Fincher lately. Um, but yeah, so I recommend it. Uh, Crystal recommends definitely. it. Uh, yeah, I think it's it fits in well with the rest of Christopher Nolan. It's definitely not up there, but it's fine. Alrighty, goodbye. Why did I do the peace sign again? (laughs) Sometimes you gotta go back to actually move forward. And I don't mean going back to reminisce or chase ghosts. I mean going back to see where you came from. Where you been, how you got here. See where you're going. and say you can't go back. Yes, you can.